back. I'm Red Shirt with Spartan Jess. We're doing the conversion of a Jasmine plasma pistol laser tag gun to an airsoft gun. We're using the innards of a Scorpion AEG, which has a low power electric gearbox. Last episode, we did all the major fitment to put the airsoft components inside. We have a magazine, we've got a wind up system there. We'll have a little room for BBs up here, but it's going to be a bit tight. What we've done is we've kept as many features from the original laser tag gun as possible. Sound system, blowback effect, uh, electronic light, it's all in there. Pretty good what we kept, but we're going to do our final fitment this time and we're going to concentrate on the electronics which are to convert it to a 7.4 LiPoly, channel it down to 5 volts for the electronics while using a MOSFET to put the full voltage and MA up to the gearbox to do the job. One of the biggest issues we have is with the speaker here. We want to keep the sound effects, but we don't have room for the speaker in its original position with our new box mag assembly we're putting in the central column. So we're going to end up replacing this single speaker with a pair of these much smaller disc speakers. But we need to relocate them as well what we're going to do is we're going to fit one here and we're going to fit a second one here. Now unlike the large speaker where there's a grid cut for the sound to escape, we don't have that here at the back of the plasma pistol. So we're going to end up cutting a series of holes we want to keep them looking as professional as everything else we've tried to aim for here on the project. What I'll end up doing is just building a wire harness out of the speaker wire and routing it to both the speaker here and up to the speaker over here for this project to finish up. I've gone on the internet, found a pattern of dots, much like the microphone pattern of old telephones, and printed out this series of even uh, dots. So when we put the, dot, the holes into the back of the plasma pistol, they'll be professional looking, consistent, rather than look like some kid just took to it with a drill gun and cobbled it up. So what I've done is I've taped the patterns onto one half of the plasma pistol shell. I'm going to use this tool, a center punch, that's going to put a divot into the plastic at each of these dots that I want to use. And I won't use the dots that come around the side further or uh, go far away from where the speaker is located. But we'll take this and we'll make marks and that'll keep the drill bit later on from wandering away from where we want to put the holes. Again, all aiming to make it look professional and uh, consistent. Well, now that we've got all the holes drilled, they still look a little bit of a mess. And that's because there's melted plastic around all the edges. We'll use this guy. This is called a deburring tool. We just take it, put it in one of the holes, give it a spin, and it cleans up the hole. We'll get it a nice finish. What we're going to solve tonight is to positively locate the magazine mechanism. We don't want it to move around during use. We need to keep it located so that it lines up with the hole for winding the magazine. Once we've got the magazine secured into place, then we'll be able to solve the where do the BBs go and where can the BBs travel within the case. So what we're using are tabs of styrene. We're going to use this plastic weld. We're going to melt these tabs of styrene to the right or left side case. And these three pieces of plastic will allow us during service to take out the magazine section, work on it, clean it if needed. But during use, we'll keep it in place. Use plastic weld in a well-ventilated area. In the liquid plastic weld, we just wick it around the edges to get an initial melt, and it will stay in place, and it'll set up. Make sure to leave enough room for the gear, the wiring to move down the back here. We'll do an initial melt to get them into place, and then we'll remove the magazine section and melt it again for the final. What we've done now is plastic weld and glue in these locator pieces. So the, the mechanism for the magazine and the feed tube will all be properly held in place 
we won't move around while we're using the gun. We'll also keep BBs from escaping from where they belong. So fit it back in. No movement. This doesn't come out. BBs will reside in this area. There'll be a piece from the other half that blocks this. The BBs will be confined to this space. Not a lot of ammo capacity, but certainly about right for a plasma pistol airsoft gun. When we sort out our electronics, we realize that we don't need the flap lock switch, which is here. So as a laser tag unit, you'd make a charge shot and the overheat flap would pop up and the system wouldn't work again until you close the flap. Well, since we don't have room for the flap mechanism in here, we're gonna just short these wires together so it always has a flap close signal so it'll automatically reset after a charge shot. We need to clean up the circuitry. We've capped off the flap lock wiring. We've uh, soldered those two together and then sealed it up with some shrink wrap so it'll get a constant signal that the flap is locked but we don't have a need for the flap motor anymore, so we've clipped it off, folded it over, and we'll do the same thing. Just a quick bit of shrink wrap to make sure it stays sealed off. Remember we had one speaker that was located here centrally, but we had to move it out of the way to make room for our BB feed mechanism. So we've replaced that with two speakers in the back of the handle and the uh, underbody we put in white plastic flaps to keep them located so they won't rattle around. But we ran the original wiring for the speaker to this first speaker and branched it off to run over down the central column and back to the second speaker here. We're hoping we get similar sound performance to the original. To put BBs into the gun, we want to make a mechanism where you can use a speed loader, put them in, but they won't fall back out. So what we're doing is taking an old section of barrel and we cut slots in each side. We'll clean this up and we'll put an O-ring around it and the O-ring will pinch in the sides so you can push BBs through it but the BBs won't be able to make their way back out. So we'll clean this up now then we'll cut the hole into the body shell glue it in and we'll have our BB feed. So here we have the standard Harbor Freight O-ring kit. We selected a small one. We're going to put it over here Hopefully with some success without having to chase it around the room. There we don't go. Success. Got it into the slots. And if you see inside, it impinges just slightly on the barrel. So we'll be able to push BBs through under pressure, but against uh, just their own weight, they won't be able to make it back out. With our O-ring on there, take a look at the feeding. Drop a baby in, push right through. Won't be able to escape, but it'll certainly be easy enough to fill. Okay, we're going to drill our pilot hole here. We're going to immediately upscale to the full size. So we found the drill bit that's closest to the outer diameter of an airsoft barrel. Stay slow to get it centered. A little too fast and getting some melt. We don't want to do that. Check it. We want the absolute minimum size hole that we can get away with. That'll do. All right, we'll come in from the inside and glue it in place and we'll catch up in a second with that. Pressed in our feed tube from the inside. We've got it flush with the outside. It'll give us just a little bit of cleanup to do with some Bondo after the fact. On the inside, I'm going to use plastic weld to do the initial job of securing it. The plastic weld, while it melts the styrene of the body shell, won't affect the neoprene of the O-rings. We'll let that go, and then we're going to backstop it with a little bit of super glue. And the challenge here is obviously not to get super glue on the o-ring. We'll get that with some quick set. Call it good. Alright, time to see if it's gonna work or not. Lining it up here, the speed loader.
Look at that. We got BBs going where they're supposed to, into the box mag section. Wonder how many it'll hold. Look at that. It works. Quick talk about the electronics we're planning to build for this project. We're looking to use a 7.4 volt 1000 mAh LiPoly battery to drive it. That's great for this low power electric gearbox, but it's still too much juice to feed back into the electronics for the plasma pistol laser tag gun that were originally designed to take 6 volts or less. So what we're going to use is this voltage regulator. This voltage regulator takes anything up to 12 volts and knocks it down to a nice clean 5 volt power supply and we'll use that to run all of our legacy electronics that are left over in the plasma pistol. Now to get 7.4 volts and all that thousand mod channeled up to the gearbox we need to use a MOSFET. And because of the custom nature of the electronics in this project we're going to build our own MOSFET. So here we have the parts of our MOSFET and we're going to use the unconventional airsoft plan for a MOSFET with a diode to stop the back current. So what is this for? Well when you cut power to a gearbox the motor spins for momentarily and becomes a generator and during that time frame it tries to feed electricity backwards through the MOSFET and it's very bad for the MOSFET. This diode will prevent that backflow of current. The unconventional airsoft plan we're going to cut off the middle pin and the reason for that is that the middle pin is common with this end. So rather than using the pin, we'll use the round connector over at this end. Then we're going to take our 2.2K ohm resistor and put it across these two terminals following the unconventional airsoft plan. We attach the 100 ohm resistor to the gate of the MOSFET. Beautiful. All right, we're going to start attaching the diode. So we'll start by tinning the MOSFET. There we go. We need this side as well later, so we'll do that now. Beautiful. Hopefully we didn't melt the MOSFET. We'll tin our diode as well. There we go. Alright, our diode is now part of the MOSFET assembly. Having made the basic components for MOSFET, we're going to solder on our trigger wire here. If we can find our competence. Alright, looks to be a good joint. We'll clean that up by cutting off the extra resistor wire. This end of the trigger wire will go to the battery with the trigger switch in between. So that'll be the cause it, the MOSFET, to channel the higher current through. So this will end up being the 5 volt circuit for the trigger, but the feed to the actual gearbox will be a 7.4 volt. Final major assembly for the MOSFET is to put the other leg of the diode onto negative leg of the MOSFET. And what this diode does, when power cuts out to the motor and the motor continues to spin, it'll try to force back the current through the MOSFET. This diode will prevent that. We've crimped and soldered the blade connector for the positive motor input. We'll hook that up soon. And the, of course, the negative will end up putting a MOSFET in the middle before we connect to the gearbox negative terminal. All right, we're going to attach the negative battery lead to the MOSFET now. Let's get a little weight on it. Good solder joint. We'll bring down the heat shrink. Give it the little rub with the solder gun to shrink it up. The place that we're going to install it, and I need all my wires to come out the same direction. So we'll give that a go. 
And shrink it up as well. My final solder for the MOSFET is to solder the motor negative battery terminal or negative motor terminal on. We've got so much mass of metal on here now that it does not want to melt on the... There we go. Now finally getting a little bit of melting. Finally, we have defeated the forces of solder to achieve a good joint. And that wraps up the actual construction of the MOSFET. Time to hook it up and test it. We have a major milestone here on this project. We've just finished wiring up the voltage regulator. Now the purpose of the voltage regulator is to take the 7.4 volts from the LiPoly and drop it down to 5 volts to run all the legacy electronics from the laser tag gun. So the three pins for this voltage regulator are input, ground, and output. So the input being 7.4 volts from the battery plug. And you see there's a pair of wires going there. So we have the power coming in from the battery, but we also will need 7.4 volts going out to the MOSFET and the motor. On the ground side, we have three pieces. We have one from the battery, ground out going to five volts for the legacy electronics, and ground out going to the motor and MOSFET. So very unique, interesting that the ground works for both the five volt and the 7.4 volt side of the system. And finally, here on the bottom, we have five volt output. And you see it's a much smaller wire because it's gonna carry much less current, but it's gonna drive all the electronics from our laser tag unit that remain with the project. Now by this point, we've made quite a few modifications to our battery box by pulling out all the innards that once accommodated the four AA batteries, just to create the space to fit in our 7.4 volt bipoly. When we have the space, we tuck it under here, we connect it up this way, and it all tucks in nicely with plenty of room for everything. And the lid will go on that, and there'll be room for us to access if we want to put on a battery minder but the battery mods are all complete. We've completed our MOSFET, got it all shrink wrapped and contained. We've hooked up our cables to the gearbox. This one looks horrible. Jesse did that. Liar. And we're ready to test the trigger. Well, maybe if we plug in the back. Oh yeah. Do it again. That is exactly what we were looking for. That's beautiful. Well that wraps up this session of working on the plasma pistol airsoft conversion. During this session we have finalized the installation of the magazine section, put in fences to contain the babies, Finish the routing of the BBs up to the hop-up chamber. Made the conversion for the 7.4 volt LiPo. Built a MOSFET. Built the 5 volt voltage regulator system so we can use the LiPoly without burning up the electronics within the original laser tag gun. And finally we finished some of the cosmetic work get the speakers installed and we've come up with a dual speaker system this, uh, here and here this one's missing at the moment that will allow us to keep the sound system from the original laser tag version of the plasma pistol we'll see you the next time as we do our first test firing finish the cosmetic work and uh, hopefully optimize the installation to make it a firing airsoft replica of the Covenant Plasma Pistol.